back your homes or restore your dead to life. But perhaps I can give you justice in the name of our king. Hey everyone, Game of Thrones just released their second official Season 7 trailer. If you haven't had a chance to see it, click on this link and then come back right after. Anyway, there is a lot of new material, and today we are going to focus on at least one massive plotline, Jon's journey beyond the wall. First, the trailer starts off with Sansa walking away from the godswood at Winterfell. Peter Baelish's voice is playing over the top of it and he's talking about fighting every battle all the time. Sansa looks troubled as if she has to make a difficult choice. This could be the moment where she realizes she needs to pick a side. Either stick with Littlefinger or be the Lady of Winterfell and try to resurrect her old life. It quickly transitions to the wall where the gate at Castle Black is opening. The two people there are Mira and Bran. We can tell from an earlier promo photo that it's clearly Bran and Mira. This is kind of capturing a big moment here because many fans believe once Bran passes through the wall, the Night King and his forces will be able to follow him. The next frame is of Jon Snow. He is wearing thick, cold winter gear, so this must be from a scene beyond the wall. If we go out of order and just focus on Jon's scenes, here is what we find. In the same harshy, snowy weather, the Hound appears, and he doesn't look too calm. This leads into a shot of black ravens flying overhead, and then the Night King on horseback. If you haven't figured it out by now, this is most likely all part of the same sequence. Beric Dondarrion from the Brotherhood Without Banners is in the same clothing as Jon and the Hound, wielding his sword while it catches fire. No, this doesn't mean Beric Dondarrion is Azor High and it doesn't prove the sword is the real Lightbringer. Beric Dondarrion has traditionally used a blade that he can set on fire. Back in the day, knights would sometimes use a tiny amount of wildfire to coat their blades, and then they would charge into battle. It would be a very intimidating look for their opponent. This is most likely what's happening here, except in a battle against the dead army. Plus, wildfire on a blade might make it easier to cut through the enemy. Also present in the battle is Torment. We don't get a better look at the scene until this frame comes up. Jon is elevated above Whites as they climb to engage their group. You can see Beric with his burning sword, and this individual may actually be Gendry or even Podrick. It's impossible to tell, but those are just the two that I think it could be. Also, can I take a second to just say how calm and regal Jon looks? It's almost like he's different after his murder by the Night's Watch. I wonder if the fact that he already died will play any significant role in his encounter with the Night King's army. The next scene from the battle is a quick shot of Jon in single combat with another White Walker. As long as he carries his Valyrian steel sword, there shouldn't be any issues since he's already had some success with it in Season 5 at Hardhome. And finally, we see the Northern King take down another opponent. What's really interesting in this frame is the circle of whites around Jon. They're not charging at him, they're just standing there. Like I was just saying, I wonder if this has to do with Jon having already died once. The undead may sense him as one of them. That could be why everyone else is battling on the ledge, but Jon is just kind of standing there. Then we can see what looks like Jon being carried off by a horse. Now, if you're familiar with any of the filming leaks, you probably caught onto this too. If you look closely, the horse may or may not be the same one you see Jon riding away from Winterfell with in the Season 7 promo photos. This could be another horse, maybe Benjen's or even one of the White Walkers. I don't know the extent of the battles taking place there, but I want to say any horses the group may have brought along on their journey probably were taken out by the Horde of White seen in the trailer. Oh, and going back to the last scene where Jon is surrounded, you can see he is using Longclaw. So for anyone thinking Jon will give the Mormonts back their family sword, it probably won't happen in Season 7, because this is most likely a clip from the last episode. In regards to the other plot lines from the trailer, we get more shots of Daenerys arriving at Dragonstone. She sees a Baratheon banner and rips it down. And of course there's more Tyrion. So far from everything we've seen or heard about the new season, 
Tyrion doesn't have an action-packed subplot. Most of the coverage on him places the dwarf at Dragonstone, walking around the area and watching dragons. Casterly Rock, on the other hand, the Lannister home, will see some action. In the trailer, we get more of the same, but a new clip of Grey Worm on a boat heading towards an opening in a rock. This is probably how the Unsullied plan to attack the castle. We know from the books that Casterly Rock is stacked on top of a massive cliff above the ocean. And on the other side of the Targaryen alliance, we have the Greyjoys fighting in a massive ocean battle. This is seemingly against the new big villain of the story, Euron. Theon and Yara will be expected to overcome their uncle's tricks, and it may provide an opportunity for Theon to completely rid himself of the Reek persona, and become confident as Theon once again. Next, Bran Stark is in a wheelchair with a person in dark garments close by. It looks like they are in the Godswood at Winterfell. Bran is wearing much nicer clothing, so my guess would be he makes it home. But who is the guy standing next to him? Is it a brother from the Night's Watch that maybe escorted the two kids back to Winterfell after making it to the Castle Black? Or is it someone else, like Howlin' Reed? Mira is with Bran, meaning she would be expected to reunite with her father after the two are south of the Wall. Howlin' Reed was one of Ned's best friends, he was the one with Ned at the Tower of Joy, so he and Bran know about Jon's real parents. Fans have been waiting a long time to see Howlin' Reed pop up in the show. Could this be the time? Anyway guys, that's going to do it for this breakdown. I plan to dig deeper into some of the other plot lines featured in the new trailer, but until then, let me know your favorite scene, and as always, have a great day, take care, and I will see you tomorrow.